make them understand that this is fun. It's about you having fun and you're the most important person for us in the world at that very moment. You know, you are our queens and kings. It's real hospitality and real service. Everyone is welcome. Hello, Melbourne, Australia, the world, everybody, whether you're in lockdown like I am for the sixth time or not, I hope you are doing okay this week. Today, I am having a chat. I'm so excited because I'm chatting to Danilo Mancini. He is the venue general manager of Society, which just opened and then just closed in Melbourne. Welcome, Danilo. Thank you, Danny. Thank you for the introduction. It's, it's lovely being here. So thank you for, for inviting me. Well, it's great to speak to you. And I wanted to, I knew I wanted to have you on the podcast when we had a chat a few weeks ago. I was at Society before it opened, doing a story for The Age Good Food. And it was about, you know, the reasons that society matters to Melbourne and I think to hospitality in general. Um, I saw you again the night before we went back into lockdown at the restaurant where you were part of the team that looked after me and some of my colleagues for a really rather extraordinary meal. While I was there um, enjoying the food, Martin Ben's food and uh, the beautiful service experience, I did not think that 24 hours later I would be back in lockdown. It's uh, certainly a bit of a roller coaster, isn't it? Yes, it is certainly. Um, we actually managed to open the restaurant twice in uh, in three weeks, so uh, we're getting really good at it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it was it was lovely having you, and, and um, 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 it was it was great meeting you a couple of weeks ago. Um, I tend to talk a lot, uh, so <laughs> uh, it was good actually to to catch up for this podcast. Good. Well, we love people who talk a lot on the podcast. That's uh, they're our favourites. <laughs> um, so, for people who don't know, do you want to just explain what society is? Yes, certainly. Um, well, society it's um, um, I would say it's a it's a complex of um, different um, different venues. Um, the idea with society is that um, you can pick your your adventure, and you actually have uh, lots of different ways to experience society. Um, whether it is the society bar, um, which is the first um, venue that you see uh, when you enter society for just a drink, um, you know, wonderful cocktail and a snack, or you know, if you like to um, uh, try um, Martin's um, Martin's food and philosophy um, at society dining room uh, for something you know a little bit more sophisticated. Um, we also have you know Lillian Terrace, which is um, really um, wonderful, um, more casual affair um, when it comes to uh, more European-inspired um, food menu. Uh, we have event spaces. So there's really something for everyone as society. Um, yeah, mm. absolutely. So it's a restaurant that's been on the drawing board for about four years. It's, uh, I, guess, I suppose, you know, the, the crowning jewel in the Chris Lucas group of restaurants and certainly something that Melbourne's been interested in experiencing since it was announced. He lured Martin Ben and Vicky Wilde from Sydney uh, as, as they were winding up Sepia lured them to Melbourne for a restaurant which for you know reasons that we well understand having all been through the pandemic uh, it's all taken a little bit longer than anybody would have have hoped. Um, Danilo what I wanted to I suppose speak to you about was the service side of things because you're part of um, an extraordinary front of house team You've had a, you've had probably longer than you thought you were going to have to plan that experience. I'd love to for you to dig in a bit to how you go about that and uh, yeah, what it's been like. Yeah, um, we we actually were meant to open um, in July uh, last year. So um, myself and a, and a couple of others we we joined the project early on around May. Um, so pretty much um, just before the second lockdown. And um, ever since we've been, we've been just thinking, all we've been thinking about was society. Um, we were quite obsessed actually with, you know, how we were going to run the restaurant, uh, all the little intricacies, you know, um, from the most simple things, you know, how we're going to set up tables, how, 
um, how will the team uh, be looking like? You know, what, what sort of uniforms we'll be looking for? How are we going to work with um, um, the kitchen, uh, the kitchen team? Um, Martin, in the meantime, and the kitchen team were just doing testing, 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 and, you know, creating new dishes, new recipes, uh, nonstop. I, I never seen so much creativity um, before. It was really impressive to see. Um, and once, you know, something was uh, completed, you know, maybe a new dish, um, straight away getting into uh, the next one, you know, what's going to be the next one like. Um, maybe we even got to um, about everything. Um, the napkins, um, what kind of service will people uh, look for? But I think the most, the most important thing that we were looking at is trying to understand what type of service uh, guests wanted to experience once they are out of the lockdown. Um, you know, hospitality is obviously changing uh, quite a lot when it comes to how we relate to our guests. Um, they have completely different expectations now. Um, and we are going to restaurants for different reasons um, compared to what we used to do before the pandemic. So uh, the main focus for us was how we're going to welcome guests, how we're going to make them feel um, at ease and relax when joining us, you know, such a high end and, and beautifully designed, um, you know, massive restaurant like Society. Um, so that was really at the forefront of our minds. What do you mean that you think people want something different uh, post or I suppose mid pandemic when they come back out to restaurants? Yeah, I think um, we really all, we all need more uh, human interaction in our lives. Um, you know, it's something that is helping a lot. Um, everyone through lockdowns is reaching out to family, friends, neighbors, you know, that kind of human contact and that we are deprived of during a lockdown. So it's something that we really need um, as humans to make us feel better. Um, and I think obviously that social aspect of dining out has always been there, you know, going to a restaurant, meeting, you know, friends, family, or special occasion, you know, with your partner. Um, but now it's even more important and people are even looking at that even more than they did that they did before, in my, in my view. I, I just would love to know when you're sitting in an office and the restaurant's not built and you're trying to design a service experience. I mean, what do you practice on each other? I mean, do you write things down? What is it actually, how yeah. do you actually do it? Yeah, I mean, per personally for me, is it was going back to something that I got um, taught from my previous um, uh, boss, um, owner, um, which was Heston, of course. And he always taught me, you know, to question everything. Um, and really is it, it was is about real literally doing that you know does it make sense when we design service um you, you just want to question every step of what you design and trying to empathize with the guest if i would be in that person um would i actually like to be greeted in this way or would i like to be greeted in another way and obviously it's 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 not it's not um, going to be the same and true for everyone. You know, we all respond differently to different interaction and different way of doing things. But at the same time, it will give you a, a very good understanding of what service will look like. Um, so you're almost trying to project um, service into an empty space and trying to see it come into life. What would it feel like? You know, what type of music? Um, what sounds, you know, all, all these really play a big factor in, um, in, in deciding what kind of service you're going for. Mm, okay. I feel like I need to strip it back even more because I suppose we've talked about the changes that you feel like people want in a, in a pandemic world. We've talked about this designing systems of service or sequence of service with, for a restaurant that doesn't yet exist. But then I feel like I want to go back even, go even deeper and ask you what, what do you think hospitality is in its essence? Like what is the essence of a restaurant? What is the purpose of a restaurant? 
Uh, wow, that's a big question. Um, I uh, I think I think restaurants are are, are so much more than a business, um, and it's what makes them incredibly complex. Um, because yes, we are a business, but at the same time, we provide so much more to the community. Um, you know, f- for me, restaurants is a place um, where I- if you do your job correctly and if you if you love what you're doing um when guests come and and see you at the restaurant they leave feeling even better about themselves um you know more than they even when they stepped in for the first in the first place um it's a place where you go to to feel better to feel good um to connect to other people um it's really a place. It's a it's a place for the community, and that's why I think society was so was so much about bringing the community together. Um, and you know, what's something that may be seen as an international restaurant, but it's so much about celebrating Melbourne and the community in Melbourne. Um, yeah, so that's for me what restaurants are. Yeah, I re- that really resonates with me, and I suppose. I mean, we can feel that sense of community and that experience of feeling better about yourself at all different levels. So I'm just thinking you you might get your coffee somewhere and the barista remembers what you have and maybe they know your name or they ask you how the kids are or the dog is. Um, so that also that makes you feel seen and recognised and appreciated as a person. And then you can take it all the way through to a place like society, which is pretty fancy and there's obviously been, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, skilled people working in all different ways, you know, on the design, on the light fittings, on the wine list, um, you know, on everything. Um, but I think that that sort of high-end restaurant can also seem intimidating to people. Some people, I suppose, meet that with their own, you know, they'll get really dressed up, they'll have their hair done, Um that, you know, and it was great to see so many people wearing incredible outfits when I was there. Um, so I suppose there's people who will rise to that. But I think also uh, as someone who's managing the service experience, do you do you need to help people through an experience that might be intimidating for them? Absolutely. I think it's our main, uh, main duty and main, you know, um, responsibility. Um, and it's, it's, you know, we're talking about it before. It's it was the first thing that we were thinking about when designing the, the style of service um, because um, all the sequence of service and all the technicality of service are just there really to support and to give confidence to, to the service team to then be cheeky or you know, to, to, to um, have a joke uh, every now and then with the guests and make them feel welcome and, and make them understand that this is fun you know, it's not meant to be um, some place of, you know, worship. <laughs> um, it, it's about you having fun and you're the most important person for us in the world at that very moment. You know, you are our queens and kings. Um, and it doesn't matter what what background, uh, um, you know, what uh, uh, disposable income or anything. It doesn't, and nothing matters at that point. You know, it's just, it's real hospitality, real service. Everyone is welcome, you know, um, and that's super important when you design a, a consistent service, which is probably the most imp- difficult thing to achieve is to have this consistently good, um, honest, from the heart service. Yeah, that is so, that, that must be such an ongoing challenge, especially when you have a big team and so many, a young team and so many people who don't have your experience, Danilo. So, I mean, how do you actually go about training people? You know, you've thought about the service experience a lot. You know, is there like a book that people have to read before they start working or is there some other way of bringing them into your world? Absolutely. Um I think it all starts from the management team and their approach towards training and towards um, new team members um, studying in hospitality. Um, I always, always remember the first, you know, times that I started working in a restaurant and, you know, looking at 
you know, back at uh, young Danilo, I, I was I was terrible. <laughs> I was real bad. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody gave me the opportunity, and you know, they believed that with some training I could have done it, and I wouldn't be doing what I do now without you know those early experiences. Um, so the management approach is the number one thing. You know, we need to understand and being understanding, you know, with, with you know, the, the, the more inexperienced team members. And it gives us the opportunity to train someone from scratch, which is very exciting. When someone never worked in a restaurant before, we know we can talk, teach them the right way of doing things, the smart way, the, you know, the good, honest way of, of doing hospitality. Um, and obviously, to achieve that, you need resources and time. Um, you know, we were very lucky that, you know, Chris um, uh, invested a lot of time and resources in creating um, an online learning platform. Um, so we have designed a training for society for all levels um, to make sure that all the information they need is very easy to access on their phones, on the fly, which is how hospitality people study. You know, we, we are like that. We are very much on the fly, flexible. We need to be able to access information, you know, in that way. Um, and then obviously you can't just expect someone to read through a manual and just turn up to work and go, okay, now I'm an hospitality pro. Um, the next step is to reinforce that knowledge, face-to-face -face training, answering questions. And, and then when it's time for them to step on the floor, finally is to be with them you know, give them the hints and tips, um, give them advice. Oh, I would have done this this way and not this way. And this is why. And this is what's going to happen to your guests if you do this. You know, this is the, the outcomes. Uh, so all that works together. You know, you need every single bit of this to actually train someone to the standard required for a restaurant like society. Wow, that's absolutely fascinating. So what's an example of something I would find in this online platform? Yeah, I mean, we start from literally the ABC of hospitality, you know. Um, um, the first thing, obviously, is we design a type of experience for society. These are all the steps that the guests will experience. Um, and as a, as a team member, you know, this is your specific, let's say, as a waiter, for instance, uh, you specifically are in charge of these steps. This, uh, this is how you do each of these steps, and this is why. Um, but also, you understand the overall experience, you know, how the team, how you as part of the team provide the overall experience to the guests. But also, there is, you know, all the, the food training, all the different dishes, how they've been prepared, um, the cocktails. Um, I'm sure you tried a couple of, um, of, of the cocktails um, uh, last week. But um, Orlando has designed amazing, you know, an amazing uh, bar program, and the drinks are really detailed, complex, but at the same time very understated in their in their look. Um, so it's important for the team to know all the intricacies and all the fun facts that is behind something like like our cocktails or our wine program or our food program. Yeah. Mm. So I suppose like from my experience as a diner, I feel like the most critical thing for a waiter to have is observation skills. Well, I suppose first they need to care and then they need to be observant. How do you train someone in those things? How do you train someone to care and then to notice stuff? Yeah, it, it goes back to always to um, kind of putting yourself into uh, somebody else's shoes, you know, um, you know, what, you know, it's, it's like, what um, if you'll be a, a, if you'll be in that situation, what would you do for, for that person? Um, I know it sounds very, very simple, but it's really what it comes to all the time. Um, you know, it's, it's about training as well. Um, the team um, to actually capture certain visual clues, you know, especially, um, you know, the guest body language, uh, where are they looking? What are they looking for? Um, are they looking um, happy or unha unhappy? Um, you know, all, this, all these signals 
really um, give you a very good understanding of what's happening with that guest. Um, and we also need, obviously, training the team to take actions on those signals. Um, it doesn't do much to be able to read the signals but not take action or even anticipate uh, the next step, which I think is the finest uh, when it comes to the art of hospitality, is the finest skill you can have is anticipation um, and kind of trying to understand what the guest wants before they tell you. And, and that's, I think, is the ultimate goal as a, as a waiter is to be able to, to do that all the time consistently and, and making sure the guest gets, um, you know, what they wanted in the first place. So, um, yeah. yes, that's. Yeah, I mean, you're really training people to be amazing humans <laughs> as well as great waiters, right? Because that's, um, it, that's exactly it, that's exactly what you need to be as a waiter, isn't it? Yes, it makes me think, Danilo, of um, one of the most magical service experiences that I've had, which is at Flower Drum, uh, also in Melbourne, where the first time I went there, I must have picked up a water glass or something with my left hand, or done something which made them realise that I was left-handed, and without me even noticing the whole like the chopsticks moved over to the left like the whole the whole setting was just like very subtly just moved to accommodate um accommodate that and i thought wow that is really really skilled and it made me feel so special and Absolutely. that i really belonged there and that i was being i was valued as a person and i mean it's just something that's so so small but so meaningful it's, i mean that is that is part of the art of hospitality isn't it absolutely because we are all unique we all eat you know in different ways you know it's it's, it's fascinating when you when you work in a in a room you know um, as society for instance we have 108 seats but this you know is a real uniqueness to all of us um, why, how people eat and why, and and after a while, it just it just gets quite addictive to just understand it. Um, it's it's uh, it's something that sounds simple, but um, it's it's really complex at the same time. It's what gets you really um, excited for the service is that you're gonna meet 108 completely different individuals, which have different stories, you're going to connect with them at different levels. And, and that's our main job. You know, um, yes, you learn how to carry plates correctly. Yes, you learn how to, to explain dishes, you learn all these things. But that connection is number one priority. And is what guests will come back for. Truly. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think, you know, while we're in lockdown, we can still eat well. Uh, you know, I'm really lucky uh, to be able to support restaurants um, to, you know, to some degree and get some takeaway. And yes, you can eat well. Of course, it's not the same as having it on, you know, plates with proper cutlery in a restaurant. But, but, but there's one thing that you definitely can't have, and that is an amazing service experience. Uh, so I know that I think a lot of people have realized through this period of lockdowns that one of the things that they really need from restaurants is that is that hospitality, is that service experience. So I, I hope that um, professionals such as yourself are being valued more highly by the community through this, through this, um, through this pandemic. Um, I think ser service is becoming more important in other industries too, which is, um, which is, which is great to see um, because it's one of the thing, the main things is when I moved here to Australia, um, I, I was talking to countless um locals here and they kept saying all the time that they wish they could get this type of service uh, when they go to the bank or when they go to uh, to other places um, so that's actually exciting that this is I see this is actually happening in other industries too which is which is great how do you draw people and retain people in such a climate um, well uh, personally um, I like to in, in, engage with them um, and making sure that they're all uh, they're all being spoken to personally um, so when something like um, something like you know lockdown six happen um, it's not just a simple email and going hey guys you know we're close for the next seven days it's, it's actually calling everyone one by one to just actually have take the time to listen to them because again, as we said before, they're all different and they're all in different situations. So 
some may need more support than others. Um, so it's important to have that human uh, touch again, you know, that call, someone to talk to. Um, but we've been very lucky because Chris has been, Chris has been an incredible leader through the pandemic um, and he's been providing so much support for the team. Um, you know, he's, he's been helping organizing um, team members to be able to work in other restaurants. They are doing takeaway, for instance. Um, you know, being able to provide the team with, you know, uh, you know, food and, and lots of different initiatives. Um, you know, we have a, a, a line, um, an extra professional counseling uh, um, company that we can talk to. Um, but it's really about, again, the human touch and really listen to their problems. Um, we, yesterday we did uh, um, some, some Zoom meetings with some games um, some, you know, quizzes, for instance, about the restaurant as well. Just trying to keep everyone busy and and their mind entertained, uh, not just thinking about the lockdown all the time. You know, it, it, it's important to have fun and trying to and trying to really um, listen to each other and speak to each other uh, in a honest and open way in this in these difficult times. Um, yeah, that's um, that's been very important. But I, I think, you know, a lot of people, you know, I'm not talking about your restaurant group, but, you know, a lot of people have left the industry over the past year and a half, perhaps looking for work that's more consistent, whether it's, you know, in retail or in construction. I mean, there are so many industries that, that some of these same skills that you've talked about and nurtured are, it can be, can be applicable. I mean, why would you... What would you say to someone who's like, well, I don't know about, I don't know about restaurants. I mean, you know, what about, what about Bunnings? <laughs> what about the supermarket? That's looking, you know, they don't close or well, maybe Bunnings closes, but let's say the supermarket. What would you say to them? Yeah. I mean, I mean obviously it's been very difficult for hospitality and, and Danny, you've been reporting, you know, so much. So obviously you heard so many stories. Um, so definitely not the most, you know, the easiest industry to, to work in. Um, but I think what sets apart hospitality and people that work in hospitality is how much we love it you know we, we don't do hospitality because of the income the steady income or the big salaries um they've never been there you know there's, there's never been a you know even before the pandemic you know um obviously now got uh, a little bit more difficult than before but we do hospitality because we actually love it it's a it's almost like a, a vocation it's something that you just is stronger than you you just want to do um, and it just gives you a kick when you are at work and you're doing it. Um, it's very um, infectious <laughs> in a good way. Um, yeah. <laughs> but but hospitality has changed quite a bit just before the pandemic and through the pandemic because, you know, gone are the days of, of the stupid amount of hours, um, you know, um, the very harsh working environments, um, the more military um you know structure of the team you know nowadays hospitality is, is a place where you can learn skills which are incredible and you can you can you can um, eventually if you ever want to change industry you actually can take with you um but it's a lot it's it's i see hospitality i always seen hospitality as a career and i think with the way the industry is going is becoming more and more viable to work in hospitality for uh, until you retire because um you know there is actually so many different skills that you can you can put to use it's not just about working the floor it's not about just cooking anymore um it's about lots of different skills that you can use um you know if if you take in consideration a company um like the lucas group for instance um you know, the huge amount of uh, behind the scenes is a huge amount of work that gets done, you know, from all aspects of hospitality. Um, perhaps you are, you've been a waiter and you've been going through, you know, your training, but you then, you know, move on to become a sommelier or maybe next you'll be writing a one list um, instead of working the floor. If you don't want to work on the floor, um, you can become a receptionist. Um, you can, you know, you can do so much. You can do so much in, in, 
it's just a small, almost a small world. Uh, there is so much within hospitality. Um, if you really want to, you never, you, you never really run out of things to do. It's very exciting. I, I saw, I was lucky enough to be at one of the soft openings when I was working on my story and I was standing in the kitchen and I saw a, a, some really beautiful moments some really beautiful moments where these young waiters and some of them looked so young. I think it was their first night on the floor. I'm sure they'd done your online manuals and done, been, been quizzed on lots of things, but it's so different in the moment. Hey, so there was this one young waiter who took a plate of, um, Took, took a few plates or two plates, let's say, out to the dining floor and it was um, Martin's Beautiful Dish, which has got the bonito with the chicken jelly cubes on top and they're like these beautiful Lovely. jewels, yes. these shiny cubes and they're just balanced on top. So as he walked out, I don't know, maybe his hand was shaking a little bit, a couple of these little cubes uh, tumbled from the top of the tower onto the plate and obviously it couldn't go out to the dining floor like that. So the waiter turned back um, and it was what he needed to do was show it to Martin to for him to fix it. But he, he was like so nervous to approach chef and there was but there was someone mentoring him there uh, a, a more senior um, waiter who said to him uh, believe in yourself and the guy stood up a little bit straighter and got close enough to Martin to say chef and to indicate the plate and Martin took it he took out his tweezers replaced the jelly and you know wiped the plate handed the dish back and then that waiter went back out to the dining floor and I just thought you know, these little moments can be so important in somebody's life. Um, and just as you talk about, you know, the the diner feeling better about themselves when they leave than when they arrived. I think that, you know, someone who has that kind of close attention and mentorship and I suppose also a belief that the dish does have to be perfect to be presented to a customer. You know, there's so much in those interactions, isn't there? Absolutely. And, you know, um, Martin has been, is is such a pleasure to work with. Is so understanding with when things are that happen too. So it's so approachable and it's so refreshing to be able to to work with someone like Martin. Um, and it, it really ta- it really took so much care of training the training the team. He spent so much time to give them you know you know that kind of confidence. And as you as you mentioned, you know it's it's that's so important. You know potentially that's someone that never worked on the floor before and you know how we react to those situations as as managers and as leaders in 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 the restaurant can really define if that person will be uh, enjoying you know working in hospitality and succeeding um it's as it takes it takes you know um very little time to um to have someone doubting about about their abilities um when something like that happens but also it takes very little time to um, reassure someone that we all made those mistakes many times before. Um, uh, even worse than that, trust me. <laughs> um, and it's it's okay. And and as a team, we mentor each other. We help each other to make sure that when that ha- when that happens, we rectify the problem, and 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 then you know we we are able to um, to continue with service. We are learning together. Um, mm, yeah it's so important yeah <laughs> it was very it was a very human beautiful moment um so Janilo, take us take us all the way back you said that you weren't very good when you started as a waiter where where, where are you from and what took you into restaurants um well I'm, a, I'm from a really small village actually uh in central italy and um i don't know it, it's just it's it's a place where um, there are many really simple restaurants um, where you eat basically uh, what the farmer has been producing in the morning and what the restaurateur could grab uh, at the market. Uh, and it's so fresh and it's so honest and it's so simple. Um, but I remember when I was going with my family to, to um, those restaurants, I just really want to to be part of that experience. I always did, um, and so I decided to do hospitality school, which at the time was seen as a you know a dropout, <laughs> a desperate last uh, uh, option. 
for most people. Um, and my father, I remember, wasn't very happy of, for me doing it. Um, but then he was very supportive after, after I told him that's what I really wanted to do. Um, and so I started, you know, 14, I started the hospitality school. Um, and in the meantime, I was working in restaurants uh, around the area. I was lucky enough to work with um, a chef that now received three Michelin stars at the time was, I believe, one, uh, which is Mauro Uliassi, um, which I think um, most people by now probably are aware of. Um, and it was a true inspiration for me working working with him. Um, and then, yeah, I left to, to UK working uh, for Heston and then that's how I got myself uh, a ticket to Australia um, six months ago when I when I came to open. Sorry, six years ago now. Sorry, not six months. <laughs> um, when I when I came to open, you know, dinner by Heston here in Melbourne. So, um, very long story, very short, but that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much me. <laughs> and uh... What were your? I mean, you mentioned that Heston was a really important influence and inspiration for you. What was it about working with uh, Heston Blumenthal that was so, yeah, so special? Um, I, I think for me it was um, the drive of coming back to work every day and looking for what you can do better. I found that incredibly refreshing. We, you know, we, uh, we would celebrate what we achieved the day before. And yes, well done. This is this is all amazing. And then we would go, okay, so what are we going to do better today? And it was literally every day was that process. And I think you can apply on everything that you do. And it's just so powerful. And it's so simple to do. It's just literally so simple to do. But also was the consistency. Consist- consistency was the big thing um, for for him and for the team. Um, both in food and consistency, consistency. Sorry, uh, in dealing with with guests too. You know, um, dealing with certain situations, and that was the two things that we used to do to really uh, look for the most um, every single day. Yes, so it, it's a bit consu- it, it could be consuming at times because you know it's just there's no rest you know it's, you keep looking keep driving keep going um but it's it just really you learn so much when you when you when you when you do that when you apply that on everything you do and bringing that sort of attitude and outlook to the australian hospitality world i mean does it fit or did you have to adjust for for australian conditions i think it does fit but um um, what I learned and what I really learned when I came to Australia was um, to worry to worry less about the technicality of service and really was about focusing more on the hospitality uh, factor. So, you know, for me, hospitality and service are, yes, interconnected, but hospitality is really about being hospitable. It's about how you talk to people, how you deal with certain situations at work. Um, and service, you know, a good technical, detailed service experience will give you the confidence to provide better hospitality. But you really need to focus more on hospitality because some things, you know, at least the service team will will be able to, um, you know, understand, you know, if, for instance, you know, with this dish, we, su- we should serve you chopsticks and fork and a spoon but for some reason this time i only served you with chopsticks and and a spoon you most likely will not see the difference you know it's only important to me as a waiter because i knew that that's what i had to do but the the hospitality side of service is something that is very tangible for the guest as well Um, so i think in australia what i learned and what i adapted was the style of service uh, and the way of providing hospitality um, to be a lot more, um, yeah, down to earth and a lot more. Um, it was really a, about being genuine and, and being honest and worry less about service and more about hospitality.
Mm, interesting. And um, Janila, you know, lockdown number six, you've talked about some of the ways that you're keeping the team engaged and supported. But I mean, how do you process this in and out? I mean, it must be so deflating to have just opened and then to have to close. Yes, um, it's, uh, <laughs> it, it is, it is. Um, I think what's, what's really important on a, on a personal level for me is I, f- I look at these as opportunities um, to actually resolve, you know, to fix problems that, that we have, you know. Um, we are presented with so many problems at the moment. Um, so I find it personally, I find it exciting to be able to actually take the time to look at those problems and trying to find solutions, you know, for when we can get back out there again. Um, you know, it's something that I think we all done very well with lockdown one. We all were motivated. We all had all our, you know, wonderful life goals. You know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to learn so many languages. And, um, and it, be, it becomes more and more difficult each time, right? Because it just, you know, as you, as you mentioned, it's deflating. You know, you, you get out there, you get, you know, you start walking again, just started running again, and then you need to stop again. Um, so having the foresight and, and really looking at the future is for me, the most important thing to keep us all motivated at the moment, because, you know, what's happening right now, it's very much, it will, it will contribute to how much joy and how much excitement and how how many happy moments we will have once we get back out there. Um, so it is tough right now, but we are getting, we're going to get out of this and what we're doing today to prepare for what's happening tomorrow. Um, it's very important. Mm, it's such an amazing attitude. One thing that I think a lot of people are thinking about, it's definitely the path that's laid out before us to get out of this, to move forward is vaccination. And, uh, now, uh, 18 to 39 year olds are able to go to the mass vaccination hubs or some of them in Victoria to get AstraZeneca. Is this something that, you know, you'll be talking about with the team or that people are starting to chat about in the industry? I think it, it's a bit of a game changer that young people are, are now able to um, easily simply uh, go and cons- hear about it and get vaccinated. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a very hot topic vaccination at the moment. You know, there is a, um, there is a lot of different information out there, but I think what's really re- refreshing and, and, and what's, what's great is that, um, there are a lot more facts now out there about the vaccination campaign and there's a lot more information. Um, so, you know, it's important to, to go and see, um, the, the GP and, to actually see what they recommend, you know, again, it's, it's, we all have different conditions. So, um, we need to talk to the experts, um, to see what they advise each of us, you know, uh, you know, in, in our different conditions. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it seems to me like the only way, uh, that we can protect each other. Um, but we certainly make sure, um, each team member, you know, make the decision based on, on, on their own uh, beliefs, um, and that's that's really uh, what we can do. It's it's providing the team with uh, with the information they need to then take their own decisions. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think um, I think it's fantastic that people can go directly to a hub and and have those discussions with people on site and certainly talk about their own health conditions and and yeah make that decision for themselves. But I think you know hospitality workers and especially you, you guys front of house, you know you're real frontline workers. Um, and uh, yeah, and so many people under forty and yeah just. Um, vulnerable. So I hope that um, a lot of restaurants uh, and other workplaces have those conversations and make it as easy as possible for their employees to um, have those discussions and hopefully decide to get jabbed because it's definitely going to move us all forwards. Um, Absolutely. Danilo, is there anything else that you want to say? Because I've loved chatting to you and thank you for fulfilling your promise that you love talking. <laughs> yes, I do talk a lot. I <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's perfect. I love it. I love it. I've learned a lot and I think it's it's really rich. And I think, you know, something that I'll take away from this conversation is just this idea of 
you know, great waiters are great people. And I think, you know, it's it, it, to be an empathetic person, I think, you know, is so much about what it is to be a good person. And that's, that's what great service is, is all about. And I think the warmth that you also bring to it, you know, we're thinking this hospitality first system second, I think that's really special as well. I, it's something I, I truly believe. And I think it's, it's really why we, we get into hospitality is because we like hospitality before, before actually enjoying service. Um, and, and yeah, and that's, and that's, it's all that matters in our, in our industry is that aspect of, yeah, human contact and hospitality is super important. Um, it was very nice chatting with you today. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, we're, we're so lucky that you're here in Australia and I look forward to uh, yeah, coming back to society when we are allowed to. Thank you so much for chatting today, Danilo. Thank you very much. Thank you, Danny. This is Dirty Linen and I'm Danny Vallant. We air the issues that the hospitality industry finds hard to talk about, hearing from different people with unique perspectives. We want to hear from you as well. If you have something that needs to be said about a topic, get in touch so we can include your perspective. Contact us at dirtylinen at deepintheweeds.com.au or hit us up on Insta at Dirty Linen Podcast. We can't wait to hear from you.